Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back. And today I decided to dive deep into one of my favorite scents from La Collection Serpent, the snake collection, God of Fire. Now, initially, when I smelled uh, this collection, uh, the snake collection, when I smelled God of Fire, uh, I kind of still have this feeling that this will be a hit fragrance. I think once it hits the market, it will be sold out right away. It's that good. And um, I think that this will become very, very popular fragrance. It will go in the Hall of Fame of the fragrances like uh, Baccarat Rouge 540, Creed Eventus, and all that stuff. Now, again, you see they're completely different fragrances, but they are extremely popular fragrances where a lot of people own them. And I think this will definitely go in that Hall of Fame. It's that good. Um, now, this fragrance, as you all know, was initially launched in 2022 recently, which I did the uh, unboxing of the fragrances on my Instagram. And then I did the first impression on YouTube channel. I kind of went over all the fragrances, but today I decided to kind of dive deeper into God of Fire and kind of explore it more for you guys. Now, God of Fire falls under amber woody fragrance and the nose behind the scent is no other than painter and poet, Stefan Umberluca, a talented person in general, infatuated with pigments and their texture. In Aztec religion, Xutacutli was mythological serpent, regarded as the spirit form of Xutacutli, the Aztec fire deity. Xutacutli word translates literally as turquoise serpent, just like the bottle. To Aztecs, turquoise denoted preciousness and was related to time, the calendar, fire, and celestial bodies. A fiery serpent generally resembles a glowing fiery rocket, a flaming broom, or ball of blue fire that lights up the dark night sky in a beautiful hypnotic blue fire color, which represents new beginning, new time, regeneration, and rebuilding. What a colossal of a name for a fragrance. Indeed, God of Fire is an atrocious and monstrous of a sin that delivers as its name suggests. God of Fire, the ruler of the sun, light, warmth, and growth. The sun of the night, a vertical modern tonic dry woods type of a sin, but yet very powerful, dense, and full of energy. <sighs> When you spray God of Fire, it will regenerate you, give you power and a great positive state of mind all day long. Very uplifting type of a scent. As I mentioned earlier in my video, or I think I also mentioned it in my previous video when I kind of went over all of them and kind of uh, did a first impression of all of them, I kind of, I don't know if I said that or not, but I feel like it kind of falls under the category of like Baccarat Rouge 540, Ensemble Swap. It just has that uh, powerful symbolic smell to it. It has that type of niche and mass appealing quality to it. The DNA is timeless and classic, and it will go in the hall of unforgettable fragrances of all time. Now, before we get to the accords of God of Fire, I would like to mention something because I heard it on Instagram that a lot of people are like, you know, you need to spray the fragrance on your skin and then review it because uh, on paper, it's not right. You just have to tell them because the fragrances, they uh, smell different on your skin. And that's true. They definitely do smell different on your skin depending on your pH levels. And that's why you don't want to review the fragrances from your skin because you're going by the reference of your skin and not by the reference of the general idea of how it smells like on a piece of paper or a piece of clothing. So what I suggest is that if you are going to talk about a new fragrance or anything uh, as far as the fragrances goes, I would say it's better to spray it on a piece of paper or your clothes and then kind of see what it smells like because that's how it's going to smell on everybody else's you know, clothes or the piece of paper that they sprayed on. But if somebody sprays on their uh, you know, skin and they get a different reaction from the fragrance and they talk about it that way and then somebody sprays on their skin, they're like, 
this really doesn't smell like that. Or let's say they go to the store and the salesperson comes up and then they don't spray it on them. They spray it on it like a piece of paper and then they give it to them. They're like, okay, I don't know what this guy was talking about, but it doesn't smell like that. So it's always a great idea to uh, spray it on a piece of paper or, or clothing and kind of uh, go from there. So with that being said, let's spray some of this and see what we get. All right, got a fire. This is so well done. It's so beautiful. I know this will be a hit fragrance. Now, God of Fire opens up with this spicy, tropical, fruity, woody, and citrusy vertical modern tonic dry woods. Now, I definitely do get mango in here, which I mentioned in the first video that I don't get that much of mango. There is some mango, but it is not a mango fragrance. Like a lot of people on Instagram, they're like, oh, this is a juicy mango fragrance. The mango is so pronounced. And it's definitely, you can definitely smell it on the opening. You can tell there's some sweetness and uh, lusciousness going on that can be from mango. But it's also, there's the spiciness going on with the fragrance. Uh, it has a spicy, fizzy top note with a pronounced fresh citrus facet and piney nuance, which must be the combination of ginger and lemon. So as you can see, ginger and lemon also play a big role in this fragrance and kind of stop the fragrance uh, or stop the mango to make the fragrance too sweet. So they make the fragrance kind of spicy and zesty and kind of piney at the same time. Now, there's there's also this tangy and sweet red fruit accord in here that I get, which must be coming from red berries as well. This is insanely good. This is like so good. Like seriously, when I spray this on my skin, I just don't get enough from it. Like you need to smell this for yourself and you'll be coming back and you're like, this is crazy. This is how good it is. So um, remember I was talking about that tropical accord on the opening. Uh, that tropical accord kind of fades away quickly. Um, and again, due to that uh, tonic uh, vertical woodiness of the fragrance, which becomes the main structure, the main body of God of Fire. So uh, you would think because of the mango note, uh, you will be stuck with the tropical fruity, very juicy with peach-like and piney facets, but they kind of become one body with that zesty citrus note and all that stuff. And they become kind of like a one fruity note that kind of becomes almost a little bit greenish at the same time as well uh, with earthy facets to it. So it morphs pretty quick, which you would expect that from Stefan Umberluca. All right, so as we get to the heart of God of Fire, uh, this interesting earthiness, sourness, and yet freshness to it uh, comes forward, which it's kind of hard to pinpoint because it keeps fading in and out. Um, it dances really nicely. And that's what you get with Stephanie Berluca. I mean, it's constantly morphing. And uh, let me tell you, it does it really, really well. But again, um, when the fragrance dries down, it keeps its exotic uh, fruitiness a little bit, but it becomes warm, spicy, earthy, woody, and hints of sweet vanilla. Now, the earthiness must be from Camarine, depending on the amount that is used. It can be herbal like hay, or sweet and warm like caramelized almonds. So I think in here, you get more of like herbal, kind of like hay type of accord with God of Fire. All right, I keep wanting to hold on to that tropical accord, but that tropical accord totally fades away and it only lasts for the first few minutes when you spray it. And that's, again, I keep repeating myself, is because of that tonic, uh, dry vertical dry woods uh, that is the main structure of uh, God of Fire. So in God of Fire, the mango is not mixed with vanilla, benzoin, and coconut like in Mango Kiss, which creates an exotic tropical fruity type of an effect. On the other hand, Stefan 
worked with citrus and dry wood for a strong dry effect, very spicy and warm spicy at the same time, or you can say cold and warm at the same time. So the mango here gives a little vibration to the citrus along with ginger. God of Fire is a very difficult fragrance to describe with uh, ingredients rather with sensation, mood, and color. Um, I don't know what it is about it. It's the fact that it's so uh, layered and so multifaceted, uh, but it's, it's kind of difficult to cherry pick the notes and be like, oh, it smells like this, smells like that. That's why I have such a hard time to go over it. Uh, but I rather can tell you guys once you smell it, it's more of a mood type of a scent, the sensation that you get with it, or the uh, kind of a color that you picture with this scent when you smell it. So uh, it has that type of effect when it comes to God of Fire. But generally speaking, God of Fire is a woody citrus fruity, but not so sweet as other fruity scents. Very unusual in its structure, but yet very familiar and mass appealing. The oud is in a very, very little quantity for balancing the other ingredients. There are about 30 ingredients in God of Fire, and cypri oil is included as a generic term for dry exotic woods in God of Fire. All right, all in all, what you get with God of Fire, it is woody, citrus, fruity, semi-sweet, earthy, sour, fresh, warm, spicy, and a gorgeous vanilla in here, which is not too sweet whatsoever. And also a little tiny bit of tropical accord just on the opening, which fades away quickly. All right, so let's get to the notes of God of Fire and see what we got. Top notes, we have mango, we got lemon, we got pink berries and ginger. Middle notes, we have blue coumarin, we got jasmine and some exotic dry woods. In the base, we have a little bit of uh, oud, which is used for balancing out the other ingredients. We also have cypriol, which is the generic term for exotic woods. And we also have a good dose of musk and a beautiful amber cord. All right, so let's get to the performance and longevity of God of Fire. God of Fire is very long lasting. So um, on my skin or on clothing, uh, it lasts for a very, very long time. On my skin, it lasts easily over 10 to 12 hours. Even when I take a shower and I come out, I can still smell it. It's very strong. It has almost the same strength as uh, Baccarat Rouge 540. It's that strong. It's really good. There's something about it that lasts very long. So as far as the uh, performance and longevity goes, I would definitely give it a very high score. All right, so let's get to projection and sillage. The projection on this thing is enormous. So on the initial spray, you get easily about five to six feet of projection. When I spray this in the house, it fills up the whole entire house. I always have people who are like, what is this good smell we can smell? I'm like, you guys are upstairs. How can you guys smell this? So they can totally smell this fragrance all over the house. So it projects and travels really, really well. So as far as the projection and sillage goes, I would definitely give it a very, very high score. All right, so let's get to the compliments. When it comes to God of Fire, it is a compliment monster. Okay, I've been spraying this a lot, and when I go out, I get a lot of, lot of compliments with this. Everybody's like, what are you wearing? It smells so freaking good. So this thing is no brainer. Like, there's something, that's why I told you guys right away, and I say this with such a confidence. Like, I know this for a fact. When you guys smell this, you guys are gonna be like, this is so good. Like, when I spray this, when I go out, I get easily, three, four, five compliments in a row. Like everybody's like, what are you wearing? It smells so good. So it's like one of those fragrances that gets a lot of compliments. And again, as I said, there's something about it, just like Baccarat Rouge 540, it's very unisex. I think uh, men and women, they can both pull it off and they would equally get lots of compliments. So I would definitely give it a very, very high score. All right, so let's get to the versatility of God of Fire. Again, it's a very subjective topic, but people want to know. And for me, this definitely can be a signature scent. So if you just want to get one fragrance that has that wow factor and you can wear this all year round in any occasion, any event, 
God of fire will do it. So there's no need to talk about it even more. So as far as the versatility goes, I would definitely give it a high score. All right, so let's get to the uniqueness of God of fire. Man, God of fire is extremely unique. Uh, fresh DNA, brand new DNA, never smelt anything like this. Uh, very unique, um, very unusual in its structure, which is a good thing, and very mass pleasing. I, I don't think anybody would dislike this. It's that good. So as far as the uniqueness goes, I would definitely give it a high score as well. With that being said, ladies and gentlemen, we continue my video. That's all I have for God of Fire. If you own this fragrance, please let me know in the comment section. And if you don't own it, I hate to say blind buy it because I don't know, like I've seen a lot of reviewers, they don't like to say blind buy it, so maybe I shouldn't say that to you guys, but I'm telling you guys, this is really good. This is an easy fragrance to like. It's gorgeous. And uh, yeah, that's all I have. Thank you so much. And hopefully I'll see you guys soon with another video. Bye.